The communication efforts are a mess and have only made things worse. Tests are hard to find. They're costly, so it's, you know, ineffective uh, at the end of the day. If you look at this data, your current plan is not working. Americans are standing in extremely long lines to get a COVID test. In the future, the federal response must be more proactive in this space. So, I mean, this was something else there. It got heated at times. President Biden's top health officials, including Dr. Fauci, facing bipartisan criticism over these confusing COVID guidelines. I mentioned it was heated. It had its moments. Kentucky Republican Rand Paul was in the middle of a lot of it. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, we played a lot of the back and forth uh, for our audience already. I, I guess um, putting aside the, the spat with you and Dr. Fett, I imagine you guys aren't going to dinner anytime soon. Putting that to the side, what, what was the headline from this hearing? Was it that we're all going to get it, every American? Or, I mean, for you, what was it? You know, most of the discussion was about testing and the shortage of tests, but very few people were bringing up that this has to do really once again with Dr. Fauci and lack of strategy. His strategy or his exhortation is everybody should be tested. So if your five-year-old tests positive, then everybody in the class should test, and then their brothers and sisters should test, then their parents should test. Guess what? Before you know it, we've got a lockdown because of over-testing. We are doing way too many tests. Never in the history of medicine have we been for testing people who are not sick. Let's test people who are sick, people who have symptoms, people who are worried about being around the elderly who have symptoms. Yes, let's do appropriate testing, but let's don't test everyone. We're doing way too many tests, and all the randomized testing in school is inappropriate and shouldn't be occurring. Okay, so, so then um, Fauci was part of Operation Warp Speed, right? I mean, he was there inside the White House during the Trump years, and Democrats were banging on this group of people every minute of every hour of every day. And now what do we face with two years down the line? You can't get a test, short in supply, and the therapies have not been pursued at the level that they should have. Why? Well, and I, well, and I think the government narrative's changing, Fauci and others, because now more people have died under Biden's administration that died under Trump's. It was never fair to blame it on one politician, but the thing is, is more people have now died. So you see a new rhetoric coming out of government. Well, 75% of the deaths have four comorbidities. They're very sick people. Well, many of us have, saying, have been saying this from the very beginning, that there's an overcount of deaths, that there are people who come in in an automobile accident, and then they also happen to have COVID. It's the same with the children in the hospital. Almost uh, the vast majority of the children in the hospital that have COVID were admitted for other reasons, and then they were tested and found to have COVID. And since a lot of the children have no symptoms, the question is, what does that actually mean? But this is a real problem, but the government is finally shifting its rhetoric, even on the mask. You know, Fauci's been all in on cloth masks. Even his allies at CNN are saying cloth masks are merely facial decoration and don't work. Well, so we're coming to somewhere because they've shown that they've lost control completely of this thing. It's a contagion throughout the community, but the good news is it's much less deadly than the previous variants. Uh, when it comes to you and Dr. Fauci, we've seen a lot of these exchanges. Why is it so personal between you two? Well, the thing is, is he's made it very personal. He's taking his office. He makes over $400,000 a year to go after specific scientists, denigrate them, smear them, call them fringe. The three scientists that he went but, after but, Senator, work at could, Stanford, I mean, he, Harvard, he, he, and he, Oxford. He was ready for that question from you yesterday, and he hit you back. He says you're raising money on your <laughs> website. Well, he didn't answer the question. He didn't answer the question, why is he smearing these three doctors? But I'm proud of the fact that people can go to RandPaul.com, and yes, we are raising money to fire Fauci because he's a menace and everything he's said has been incorrect and I think he's part of the problem. Even from the very beginning, the fact that this virus came from the lab in Wuhan, he's denied it. He's worked to cover it up. He's denigrated anybody who raises this question as a conspiracy theorist. So yes, he's a partisan politician. He has no place in any objective role over the pandemic. And yeah, it's a political thing because whoever wins the election will make the decision on whether he stays or goes or whether we investigate where the virus came from in the beginning. Well, in the meantime, we've got to deal with what we're dealing with right now, and that's Omicron. And it's, as you know, it's, uh, pardon for that, uh, it is highly infectious. Senator, thank you for your time. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.